if I could say one thing, it's that if you've passed PA school and you haven't been like hanging on for dear life the whole time, you've been even like somewhere around the middle of the pack, you really do have everything in your head that you need in order to pass the pants. And just trust yourself, love yourself, and understand that you do know what you need to know. So I just want you to know that I've been there. I was a really average student and I passed the pants with a pretty comfortable margin, so. Hey guys, I'm Boris, I'm a physician assistant. Back here in my rolling studio, my car. As you can tell, it's packed to the rafters. It's packed all the way to the roof with all my stuff. I'm, uh, I'm moving back up to Syracuse where I went to school at Lemoyne College for PA school. Um, and it's where I got my first job, which actually starts Monday. Today's Saturday, so two days. Excited, nervous, kind of terrified, but definitely mostly excited and just like super stoked, super happy to start this first PA job. Really happy about it. But I talked about that in a different video, so I'm not gonna, not gonna talk about it here. I'm gonna spare you. And in my last video, I talked about my experience taking the Physician Assistant National Certifying Exam, the PANTS, or PANC, as some people say. Uh, so today, in this video, I actually want to tell you how I studied for the PANTS. I'm going to say PANTS if you say PANCY. Sorry. PANTS. I'm going to go with that. This may not make it into the video because it doesn't matter. But anyway, I'm going to tell you about how I studied for the PANTS. So I took the PANTS about two weeks, give or take about two weeks after graduation, after my last rotation ended, so after finishing the program, I gave myself about two weeks to kind of recuperate, take a little time off, and also really hardcore study for the pants. So when we're talking about studying for the pants, it's this massive exam, you know, it takes you two, three years just to prepare for this exam, which is your PA program. So I can't really say you study for it. I can more say that you practice for it. Here's what I mean. There's no way I don't care how smart you are, how good you are at studying, there's no way that you can learn that much material in one night, in one week, in two weeks, even in like three months. There, there's just simply no way. That's why it takes two years to finish a PA school program. So you're not really studying. You're not learning a whole lot of new material. What you're doing is you're practicing. You're practicing using the material that you already know, maybe learning one or two new things that like you're just really deficient on that might be important like reviewing EKGs or something like that but mostly you're just practicing using the knowledge that you already have perhaps the knowledge that you may have maybe used on your first rotation your second rotation or stuff that you haven't seen since didactic year so it's been a while since you've used the information but you have already learned it you've been tested on it it's in there have faith that it's in there in your brain you just kind of have to practice pulling it out of your brain and choosing the right answer. And as I said in my how to study video, which, which I'm going to link right here, I honestly think it's a good video. I really did some research on how studying works, how learning and recall work, and I kind of broke it down into a very easy to understand format. And it helped me understand how I study myself, so I think it might help you if you want some information on studying. But one thing that's really important, I think, from that video is is the concept of cued recall. So just because something's in your brain, just because you know something, doesn't mean you're gonna be able to pull it out. You have to practice doing that. And that's what's called cued recall. You see something on paper, you see a question, or you see a patient, or whatever it is, and that's your cue to pull out whatever knowledge you need in order to treat that patient correctly, or to say the right thing, or to get the right answer on a test. So you're practicing using the association of the knowledge you have with the cue that you're gonna get on a test or in real life. And essentially, that's most of what I did for those two weeks before the pants. One really common piece of advice that PA students, especially kind of later in their training, so second year PA students, especially after they've had a couple of rotations under their belt, and they're really starting to think about the pants seriously because it's coming up, one really big piece of advice that we always get is questions, 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 do more questions, do a thousand questions, do 3000 questions, as many as you can. And there actually is a lot of reason for that. I know some people wouldn't agree, but there is a lot of reason for that. And that is that that piece of advice assumes that you've done a great job through didactic year, learning everything that you need to learn, that knowledge base, and now you just need to practice using it. You need to practice taking questions. So you're not even really using the questions, let's say in the Rosh Review or the U-World 
or whatever question bank, you're not really using those questions to learn things and uh, maybe fill in the deficiencies. You're mostly just practicing your test taking strategy. And I think there's a lot of validity to that. I think there's a lot of credence to that, but it's not everything. So anyway, let me get to what I actually personally did those last two weeks between graduation and actually taking the pants. So on the screen right now, you should see a little schedule. If anybody watching this actually knows me in real life, you know this is what I do basically every day. I wake up in the morning, I maybe meditate or whatever it is just to kind of get my mind right, unless there's somewhere I'm like rushing off first thing in the morning. And then I set what's called intentions or a plan of the day. I think this carried over from the Navy where we have a plan of the day. Uh, I, I make a plan of the day for things that I really, really need to accomplish and things that I really want to accomplish. Of course, it's prioritized, things that have to happen, and then things that I would like to happen. So for these two weeks, I was very regimented, I was very organized. I didn't work, I didn't really have anywhere to go, I didn't really do any social activities. I was actually staying with my parents just so I could hang out with them, but also so that I could be away from everything and just kind of isolated and to do my work and focus on really prepping for this pants as well as I could, because it's a really, really important exam. If you don't pass this thing, then you can't work. And then why'd you go to PA school in the first place, right? So it was really important to me to pass this thing on the first try, and I did, and I'm happy to say I passed, but that was in the previous video. So anyway, as you can see in the schedule, which I don't have it in front of me, I might make some mistakes, uh, but I basically memorized it because this was my life for two weeks. So first thing you see is meditate slash earth. What is earthing? If you're kind of a, you know, hippie, earthy, crunchy kind of person like me, uh, you probably know what earthing is. But for those of you who are not, who might be a little bit more normal people, <laughs> um, uh, earthing, I highly recommend it, just not in the winter. Earthing is basically going out and just like standing in the grass barefoot. I don't know if there's a whole lot of science to this. It's supposed to like ground you with the electromagnetic pulses of the earth or something like that. I'm not gonna explain it scientifically because I don't know it scientifically. What I do know is that it works. It grounds you, it just calms you down. It just like regulates your breathing, not medical advice at all. I don't know if there's any scientific basis to this whatsoever. It just works for me. It like, it just grounds you. It makes you feel at peace. It makes you feel calm. So I highly recommend earthing. You don't have to stand out there for an hour, especially if it's cold, you know, your feet are gonna get cold and it's, you know, unpleasant and kind of annoying, but just for like even a few minutes, just stand there. If you're in a safe, quiet area, like my parents' backyard, for instance, just stand there, take some deep breaths, close your eyes, listen to what's going on around you, assuming it's like peaceful noises, you know, like birds, chirping, stuff like that. If you're in like the middle of Manhattan, I don't know what to tell you. There's probably nowhere to earth because there's no grass, uh, unless you go to Central Park, but I don't know if I go earth in Central Park because there's like, I don't know, man. I don't live in a city, I can't tell you. But the point is, if you live somewhere with access to like clean, nice grass in a peaceful environment, highly recommend earthing. Totally random tangent. If you don't like earthing, do whatever. Do something just relaxing first thing in the morning. So for me, I also like to meditate. Uh, not necessarily like sit there and listen to myself breathe, but just kind of sit there with my eyes closed in just like sensory deprivation and just kind of notice my thoughts. Not really judge them, not really try to push them down or get rid of them, but just but just kind of sit there, just let them come and go, notice them, notice what's going on in my head because those thoughts are gonna be there anyway. So, you know, they deserve a witness, they deserve to be noticed and respected. Even if I'm not gonna do anything about them, just kind of sit there and be with yourself. My favorite way that I've ever heard meditation described is just to be with yourself. You deserve to be with yourself for 10 minutes, for five minutes, however long you meditate. You know, I started with like two minutes just because I couldn't take it and then five minutes and now I'm doing like 10. Maybe one day I'll be a total guru and, uh, you know, meditate for half an hour. Sorry, I'm trying to pass this Jeep Wrangler here who's going kind of slow. I'm, like I said, I'm driving down the highway. That's why I'm not, uh, not looking at the camera. That would be unsafe. Uh, but yeah, so I like to meditate. If it's not something you'd like to do, I wouldn't maybe start a new practice two weeks before your pants. Uh, probably wouldn't do anything stressful or try to change any habits. Do whatever it is that just grounds you, that just makes you feel calm, at peace, supported, happy, 
don't jump right into studying. Don't jump right into doing note cards or test questions. Just straight up, just wake up and chill. Don't even go downstairs or wherever your family or friends or roommates or anybody lives. Don't talk to anyone. Just wake up and spend a few minutes just relaxing. I promise it'll make you feel better for the rest of the day. It'll just give you like a more grounded, more relaxed, just internal environment is the best way I can describe it. A nice, relaxed, internal environment to kind of, uh, sorry, um, to kind of just do everything else on. And I think it makes a big difference. So anyway, not to beat a dead horse. I think we're good there. Moving on. So after my meditation and or earthing, whichever one, just get nice and grounded. The very first thing I would do before even making coffee or doing anything else, I would do 60 questions. 60 Rosh review questions or U World or uh, a couple days I did those uh, NCCPA practice exams that are 60 questions. Whatever it is, it's just very important to do 60 questions as fast as you can. Do them for speed. Don't do them for uh, content. So like if you're familiar with Rosh Review, you know you could do tutor mode. That'll give you one minute per question. Or you can do, um, oh sorry, you could do test mode. That'll give you one minute per question. Or you can do tutor mode. That's unlimited time. And then it gives you an explanation uh, once you've answered your question correctly or incorrectly. So all of that. Um, I highly recommend in this regard to do test mode. So you're practicing actually doing those 60 questions fast as if you would do them in an exam, as if you were taking the pants. And the reason it's 60 is because as you probably know, the pants has five 60 question segments. So basically what I'm doing is training myself as soon as I wake up to just get in that mode and do a 60 question segment. It's just, it's important to me to think of the test not as 300 questions, not as five hours, but as 60 question segments. Also, I've noticed, I looked at my phone here and it's, uh, it's kind of dark. Is that better? That just looks weird. How about that? It's got some light going on here. How about this? Is that, ah, that looks weird too. You know what? It's a little dark. I'm sure you guys can handle it. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. And I'll try to wrap this video up in less than like an hour because I keep rambling. But, okay, so moving on. So, first thing I did, meditate or earth. Second thing I did before even having coffee or talking to anyone or doing anything is knock out 60 questions as fast as possible. Then, and I think I'm sticking to the schedule I wrote down here, then I finally went downstairs. I, li you know, I lived in my parents' uh, spare bedroom upstairs uh, while I was staying with them for these two weeks. And then I went downstairs. I would allow myself to you know, say hi to them, talk to them, chat with them, whatever, just you know, live like a normal person. What you'll notice is later in the schedule, I say phone on. So that means this whole time my phone is off. I do not wake up at this time at least. Wasn't waking up and looking at my phone, checking emails, checking Instagram, checking my YouTube views, whatever. Like, no, phone's off until the afternoon, every single day, no distractions. I wanted to wake up, ground myself, be like really relaxed, and then knock out 60 questions. Just be in that mode. Then I'd finally go get my coffee. I'd go downstairs. If my mom or dad were down there, I'd go say hi to them. I'd get my coffee. I'd make it, um, make, you know, make it with half and half the way I like it. Just enjoy my coffee, bring it upstairs, maybe make some breakfast, whatever. If I felt like it, eggs or uh, oatmeal or something, whatever it was. And then I'd go upstairs and then I would keep working. So I would review, if I, uh, if I could, I would review the questions that I just did. Looked at the ones that I got wrong, especially see why I got them wrong, not just try to memorize the right answer, but actually see like, okay, what do I not understand here about this drug's mechanism, about the pathophysiology, like what is going on? Why did I get each of these questions wrong? I do that. Then I usually look at the ones that I got right just to make sure that I didn't just get lucky and guess the right thing. I wanted to actually make sure that I remember things properly all the way through. I understand everything, the pathophysiology, the treatment plans, the uh, demographics that these diseases affect, everything. I wanted to make sure that I remembered things properly. And then maybe in the schedule, you see what I wrote down as three by 15. I have this giant stack of note cards that I made basically out of everything that I didn't know from the 3,300 questions in Rosh Review, the clinical question bank. Everything that I got wrong, 
I'd make note cards out of it. And so before I knew it, I had a massive stack. I'll probably show you a picture of it, but it's like, it's bigger than this. I mean, it was like this tall. Uh, so what I would do is three by 15 minutes. So three sets of 15 minutes, Pomodoro technique, focusing on nothing else except for doing note cards. So do that for 15 minutes, set a timer, you know, take five minutes break, listen to some music, lie down, whatever, chill out, and then do another set of 15 minutes and then take another break and then another set of 15 minutes. Just really intense, just focusing on putting a 100% of my mental effort into doing these note cards. That's Pomodoro technique, very powerful. Okay, so that's what three by 15 note cards means. Then what I would do is I would usually do some more questions. And usually now I'm doing them in tutor mode. So I'm not really practicing, I'm not really training myself to use my test taking strategy. I'm more just looking at content, practicing applying it and also just reviewing it as it comes. <clears throat> uh, and sometimes I do Pomodoro technique, like I do this for 20 minutes and take a break, 30 minutes, take a break. Kind of being nice to myself and seeing what my attention span was. So if I'm just like really not able to focus after 15 minutes, I take a break and then do 15 more minutes. If I'm really gung ho that day and I could do like 40 minutes without taking a break, do it, take advantage of it and then take a break and then go again. So whatever it is on the schedule that I wrote down, that's what I'd usually do in the morning. So quick review, very first thing, doing some meditation or some earthing, some way to ground myself, some stretching, some relaxation of some sort. Then before anything else, 60 questions, fast, simulate the test, pretend you're taking the exam. Then make my coffee, make some breakfast, relax a little bit and do some more questions. Now in tutor mode, not in test mode, do some note cards and review everything that I got right and everything that I got wrong that morning. So that's my morning. And that's between two to maybe four hours total, something like that. Then I would go to the gym every single day for me personally, the gym is just my place to feel at home, my, my place to feel relaxed. I know where everything is, I know what I'm gonna do, I just, I really enjoy being there. So I wanted some sense of normalcy and also just like something to take my mind off of studying and off of all of the stress about this exam that I've got coming up in two weeks. So I made sure to go to the gym every single day. I didn't lift every day, some days I'd lift, some days would be just some cardio, but either way, I made sure I was in the gym every single day. And now we're passing a semi-truck. And yeah, I'm looking at the camera. It's really, really dark now. I don't know if you could even see my face, uh, but I'm gonna keep going because I think this is an important video to, uh, to put out for you guys. Then I'd have my afternoon shift. So what I described to you just now was the morning shift. The afternoon shift was different. There was some testing. So sometimes I do like 60 questions in test mode again, but basically these 60 questions in test mode, again, are not really about the content. They're about practicing my test taking strategy which I've described in other videos, but it's very basically read the last two sentences first, then read the answer choices, and then read the rest of the question, kind of skim the rest of the question as needed. And if you want a really, really, really detailed explanation of how that works and why I do that, watch this video right here, where I totally describe my test taking strategy and how it works and why it works and all that good stuff. So anyway, afternoon shift, I would do some more questions, probably another three to four hours of work of uh, mostly just reviewing note cards, reviewing stuff I already know, doing more questions in tutor mode, just really being with the material. Not trying to force more information into my head, but just repeating stuff that I already knew, maybe stuff I knew months ago, and that I just kind of need a refresher on. And that's essentially it. I did the same thing for about two weeks. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna flip through my pages and take a bunch of screenshots of these schedules because they did change. Like for instance, on Saturday, I did you know my earthing, my meditation, my 60 questions, and maybe like a couple hours of work. I didn't do as much. And then on Sunday, all I did was my first three things, the earthing, the meditation, and the, uh, the 60 questions fast in test mode and nothing else. And then, you know, on Monday, I started back up and started working, you know, six to seven hours a day, uh, like I just described to you. So be nice to yourself. If you feel like you're getting a little burnt out, you know, take a day off, it's totally fine. Be comfortable knowing that if you pass PA school, you have all the information that you need in your head. You've learned it, I promise. You just need to learn a little bit maybe on test taking and you need to kind of just like sit with the material and practice pulling it out of your head. But you know everything that you need to know. I really do promise that. And for me, like I just said, even on the day off, I still made sure 
to hit those 60 questions first thing in the morning in test mode. That is the most important thing that I did personally to prepare. I think I was gonna say a few more things about this, but honestly, I just, I can't really remember what I was gonna talk about. If anyone has questions about how I prepared for the pants or what, or why I did any of what I did, or just how the pants was or whatever, please shoot them in the comments, shoot me a message on Instagram, whatever you wanna do. I'll be happy to respond, help you guys out as best that I can. I know it's a really stressful thing is uh, preparing for this pants, so I just want you to know that I've been there. I was a really average student, and I passed the pants with a pretty comfortable margin, so watch my last video if you wanna know more about that, but just, if I could say one thing, it's that if you've passed PA school and you haven't been like hanging on for dear life the whole time, you've been even like somewhere around the middle of the pack, you really do have everything in your head that you need in order to pass the pants. So you just have to focus on really perfecting your test taking strategy, getting really comfortable with it, and doing the same thing over and over again for every question, and just trust yourself. Love yourself and understand that you do know what you need to know. Okay guys, if your pants is coming up soon, good luck. If you're a PA student, you have a few months until the pants, you know, good luck to you as well. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.